A casual observer would have a really hard time distinguishing between the diesel and the electric version of the LR refuse truck if the engine wasn't running. The electric version is much quieter, of course, and that's a real benefit to the customers located along the collection routes as well as the drivers. The electric LR will also be a lot less expensive to operate because of the reduced need for powertrain-related maintenance. And the regenerative braking function is expected to massively reduce brake wear. But best of all, because it's all electric, there are no tailpipe emissions. I'm equipment editor Jim Park at Mack Trucks Customer Center in Allentown, Pennsylvania, where Mack has just handed over the keys to its first electric LR truck to the New York City Department of Sanitation. Under New York City's Clean Fleet Plan, the Big Apple has to cut its fleet vehicle CO2 emissions by 80% by 2035. New York has already replaced 2,200 of its gasoline-powered on-road vehicles with plug-in electric models. It plans to have at least 4,000 electric vehicles in use by 2025, including electric refuse trucks like the LR. Rocky DeRico, the Deputy Commissioner of the Department of Sanitation, says there's no way New York City could meet its 80% CO2 reduction targets without electric refuse trucks. The department is going to evaluate the truck on certain residential trash collection routes, but that's the easy part. The department also wants to plow snow at the trucks in the wintertime. It's not so much the mileage. We, we deal more with hours and miles or house, house stops. It's more about hours of operation and how many stops there are in the route. So we put it in a district that's quite about 18 miles and I don't know how many stops it has, but it's a uh, middle class area with one family houses and we'll see how long it lasts if we can finish the route. And then when we're done with the route, within the eight hour period, we're gonna see what, what, what the level of the battery capacity is to see if we had to put a plow on the truck, how far we could go. An hour, two hours, four hours, or maybe not at all. Maybe the battery's dead. So that's one of the first tests that we're gonna do because ultimately we have to get to plowing. We have to. We can't have a fleet for plowing and collection. This truck is the first of its kind and it's still a work in progress. The way it's equipped today could change three or six months from now, but presently, Mac has four lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide batteries on board. Mac wouldn't say what the exact capacity is because this one hasn't gone through real world evaluation yet. Those batteries drive two 600 volt motors capable of developing a combined output of 496 horsepower and an astonishing 4,051 pound feet of torque. You can compare that to a Cummins X15, which delivers 2,050 pound-feet of torque. The transmission is a two-speed design intended to maintain battery efficiency while operating at higher speeds. The motor and transmission assembly are completely integrated and fit into a space not much bigger than an M-Drive transmission currently occupies. All the accessories on the truck, including the power steering, air compressors, etc., are all electrically driven. Even the hydraulics for the Heil Packer body are electrically driven. There are actually three separate electric systems on the truck, a 600 volt circuit for the drive motors in the packer, a 24 volt circuit for the electric over hydraulic power steering, air compressors and the air conditioning, and there's also the standard 12 volt circuits for lighting and cab electrics. Mack Trucks has been working with the City of New York for nearly a hundred years. It's natural then that these first steps into refuse truck electrification would be with one of its biggest refuse truck customers and probably one of the toughest. It's just the first step of many to get to the commercialization, commercialization excuse me, of electric trucks in the industry. It's got to start somewhere. This is where it starts for a heavy-duty commercial refuse truck, collection truck. Yep. And there's no better partner than the city of New York to do this with because the application is so um, intense there and how they use the trucks, uh, the durability and reliability required. We know if we can be successful, and we will be in the city, that we can be successful in other cities uh, and other municipalities across the country. Mack has tried many different powertrain variations for its refuse trucks, from diesel and natural gas to hydrogen fuel cell, and now full battery electric. Jonathan Randall says the time is right for this version, and he fully expects the battery technology to improve in the near future. 
Battery electric, the power, the battery power, the battery density is getting to the point where we can move 70,000 plus pounds over a period of time and be able to handle the parasitic load. The cost of the batteries are coming down, right? And so as these things happen and more and more fleets start to test and adopt, it just brings that commercial viability more and more to the market. And we need fleets like this, like the city of New York, and we've got another one that we're getting ready to start testing with Republic Services to make the investments with the resources that they have so that again the commercial viability becomes available to the entire market and operators across the country. It's a process uh, and it's not going to happen tomorrow but it's certainly going to take some time and, and we see the future of electric is pretty bright for, for Mack trucks. And of course we got a chance to drive the electric LR during the event. So we got the uh, electric LR right now. Um, most obvious difference compared to the diesel, of course, is, is the silence in the cab. Um, we've experienced the electric truck phenomenon in the past where everything squeaks and rattles. Uh, there's a couple little squeaks, but you can barely hear them. So, you know, for a driver used to driving a diesel LR, sitting right on top of the engine practically, uh, this is going to be a real treat. This is an extremely pleasant environment. There's a few things a driver is going to have to learn you know, about operating the truck with the regen braking, how to get the most efficiency out of the battery pack over the course of a day. But that's probably a half day's training, maybe a day, and uh, some field experience to get the drivers used to it. Um, it's a little bit different than just mashing your foot down on a diesel and then hitting the brake as hard as you can to stop. Uh, this is going to be all set up so that the uh, drivers can maximize the battery life on their routes. Uh, like I say, a little bit of training, but not that much. It's not that complicated to drive. The truck has both right-hand and left-hand drive, just like the diesel LR. There's hardly any difference between the two except really fast launches because of those high-torque electric motors. It also has a three-position regenerative braking system. It operates in high or low mode when collecting, but when driving down the street, the driver puts it into auto mode. That requires the driver to step on the brake pedal to activate the regen braking. The difference is the truck can coast when it's in auto mode so the regen braking doesn't activate every time the driver takes his or her foot off the accelerator pedal. I had only a few minutes on the new LR, but like all the electric trucks I've driven so far, I found this one about the same as the diesel version, only better. Oh yeah, and about that odd colored bulldog hood ornament? Mac has always used a gold bulldog to signify a totally integrated Mac powertrain. So for its electric powertrain, Mac has made the bulldog copper. At the Mack Trucks Customer Center in Allentown, Pennsylvania, I'm Equipment Editor Jim Park.